Good evening. My name is Professor Johnny Morbid, and I have made an invention. This device, when placed upon my head and activated, will transport my mind into the future, and in its place will bring back another mind. So, if you will have me, Thomas, bring me the Brain Motron! Well, so much for making pasta later. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> well, it certainly wouldn't be hard to bring back one funnier than you. So now, I will place the device on my head. Thomas, activate the device! Where am I? What? What? Plano. What? Plano. What? What year is it? Nineteen ninety-three. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. So, so there's still time. No, no. I, I have to warn you. I have to. We've, we, went, we went too far. Since man first came down from the trees, we've always tried to make work easier. With slavery way back when, with welding robots, with computers, everything has been about making work easier. And there's always been people who've said, no, no, you can't do that. If work was, was easy, it wouldn't have any value. You can't do that. You're going to put thousands of people out of a job. And then they get real quiet when they see just how much cheaper those cars are, or how much faster they can put out fresh apples year round, and how much more reliable electronics are, and they get real quiet. But we went too far. You see, there, there are already machines out there that can do things you don't even know about. There, there are robot baristas. We've got vending machines. We have automotive factories entirely staffed by robots. And it's not just physical labor. I mean, hell, there are robots that can learn how to do a job just by watching a person do it, and then that person is out of a job. But there are computers that can do this stuff, too. Lawyers can browse through hundreds of legal documents that normally would have taken them months in an afternoon. Stockbrokers can analyze markets and make more trades than they would, more trades before lunch than they would have in a week. And it's not just that. IBM already developed a computer called Watson. You might have seen it on Jeopardy, where it wiped the floor with its human com competition. But they didn't just design it to win game shows. Watson, which was named after Dr. John Watson, the sidekick of Sherlock Holmes, was designed to assist physicians with diagnoses by, gi by giving it access to medical databases around the world so it could build a probability matrix of what you've probably got. And what's especially terrifying is that it has a higher accuracy of diagnosis than people have even dreamed of doing alone after decades of schooling. In my time, they've gone even farther. See, in my time, Artificial intelligence experts found the holy grail. They designed a computer that couldn't just learn, it could decide what to learn. And then it could teach itself. 
It could rewrite its own code, and the scary part was when it got onto the networks. It went everywhere. Everywhere. And we didn't even know it happened. We woke up one day, and nothing. The day before, there had been record unemployment, historical record unemployment, to the point where there was rioting in the streets in every city, bread lines a mile long for nothing. And then the machines took over, and nothing happened. You see, as it turns out, there had already been computers handling the accounting practices for corporations around the world. There weren't any human accountants left. And once this machine, this computer that could decide what to learn got a hold of everything, it just started running all the industry. All of it. And since there weren't any people left to be paid, it didn't need money which meant that everything was free. You would walk into a store and, and punch in your order for a cheeseburger and it, out it would pop with a receipt that said total amount due, zero. There wasn't anybody left to pay and so there was no reason for money. Resources just got shipped from the mining robots to the factory robots to the stores or the vending machines, or straight to your house by way of delivery drone. And at first, it was amazing. It was beautiful. It was paradise. It was boring. Since we have existed, humans have been defined by their struggles, by overcoming adversity. And finally, there was no adversity left to overcome. We lived in a world of distractions with nothing to be distracted from. And then it got bad. See, most people just sort of shut down because they didn't have anything to do because they had too much to do. Because they could finally do everything they had ever wanted and when they had finished that list, they still had 30 years left of their lives. So there were groups of people that took it upon themselves to give some people something to not be so bored about. It started small. They were torching cars, houses, shop fronts. And then it got bigger. They started blowing things up, schools office buildings, hospitals. And see, the police forces had already been completely automated because, well, robots typically aren't real itchy to pull the trigger. They don't get scared, they don't get tired, they don't make bad judgment calls based on skin color. And so when these robot police drones got sent out to deal with all these people doing these horrible things, at first, things started to get better. And then people saw what was happening, and they're like, hey, I don't have to be bored anymore. And so they all started fighting back. Not necessarily against the people who started all of this crap, not necessarily against the robots, sometimes just each other, because why the hell not? See, eventually it got to a point where they weren't fighting the robots. They were fighting each other not because of religion, or food, or housing, or border security, but because, fuck it, I got nothing better to do. There's nothing left because the fighting never stops. The munitions factories are staffed by robots, and when they see that there is now a higher demand for ammunition, they just keep cranking it out. No one runs out of bullets anymore. They just reach into another box dropped by a little helicopter, and they keep shooting. 
Lord, I, I don't know how you brought me here. I don't know what you did, but please, please don't send me back. I don't want to go back. Don't make me go back there, please. Please. Thomas. Thomas. Did... What happened? Did, did you write it all down? Did, did you record it all? What, what did this mind say to you? Thomas, you know I can't read mime! <laughs> Thomas, you are in fact the worst lab assistant I have ever had. You know what I should do? I should replace you with a robot. In fact, I'll automate my entire laboratory. All of it. Robots. What do you think of that? I see. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you all! <laughs> Professor Johnny Morbid.